Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the K&N Blackhawk cold air intake available for the 09 and newer Challenger without the shaker hood. Now, if you're the owner of a 5.7 Challenger, you might be looking to ditch the factory intake and air box in favor for one that's gonna make your engine breathe a lot better, operate more efficiently, and have an overall big upgrade in the filter department. Now this particular Blackhawk cold air intake is definitely for the guys looking for an aftermarket intake that gives you a stealthy appearance under the hood. Now if you're not really interested in a cold air intake for its appearance, there are a ton of other options in the category for you. This one is specifically for guys looking for a stealthy, more aggressive look when you pop the hood. Great for show car owners looking to black things out a bit and blend in. Now this intake uses a dry flow synthetic media technology from K&N, one of the more reputable brand names in the category, which is gonna give you an oil-free filter experience. That means less maintenance when it comes time to clean the filter. All you have to do is pop it off, wash it, and throw it right back in. It is washable and reusable, unlike some of the dry drop-in filters that you'd get from the factory, like the OEM replacements. This is using a black filter to blend in with that Blackhawk theme, which is very unique for filters in the category. Now this is gonna also boost some horsepower and torque numbers. Now while the intake does not require a tune, we're not strapping it down to the dyno today, but just know that K&N does claim about 14 horsepower and 13 torque when installing this intake alone. Now again, Pairing that up with a tune really maximizes its performance and capabilities, but no tune is required here. So right out of the box, it bolts down onto the hood for an ease of use experience. This uses a black powder coated tubing there, which is kink free, which means it's gonna have an unrestricted airflow from head to toe, unlike your factory unit, which we'll compare it side by side to a little bit later in the video. The price for this unit comes in right around 400 bucks, putting it toward the top end of the pricing spectrum. K&N is one of the more reputable brand names in the category. And because this is unique with its blackout, price tag bumps up just a little bit. Install, I'm giving one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle this with about an hour's worth of time in the driveway at home with very simple hand tools. Cold air intakes are known to be one of the easiest things that you can do as far as modifications go to your Challenger. And this guy here is gonna be absolutely no different. There's no drilling, welding, or any of that nonsense involved. I'll walk you through the entire process from start to finish. What do you say we get started? Tools used in the install include an impact gun, a ratchet, eight millimeter deep socket, 10 millimeter deep and short socket, 13 and 16 millimeter deep sockets, extension, 10 and 14 millimeter wrenches. First step of the uninstall here, of course, pop your hood. We're gonna remove our engine cover. Now, if your Challenger does not have an engine cover, you can skip over that step, but we wanna get that out of the way to get better access to the clamp holding our factory intake to our throttle body, so let's do that first. All right, in order to do that, you're basically just gonna lift straight up, pop that out of place, and set it aside. Next step here, we're just gonna unplug our temperature sensor. Right here, we're just gonna pinch and disconnect. Next up, you wanna grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver and loosen up the clamp holding your tubing to your throttle body. Next, we're gonna use the same eight millimeter to head over to our air box. There's one 10 millimeter bolt holding that guy in place, so let's get that off. We have one breather line at the back end of our air box that we're just gonna pull straight back, just like that. Next up, we can remove the entire air box. I'm gonna lift up with my hand here on the resonator tube, just like that, disconnect it from the throttle body, lift straight up on the air box and set the entire assembly aside. So we got our factory intake off of our 13 RT behind me and it's on the table next to our K&N Blackhawk intake. And I wanna take you through some similarities and differences here between the two kits. And I gotta say head to toe, this aftermarket intake is completely different than your factory option. First and foremost, I wanna focus on our filter because that's really gonna be the star or key player in the kit here. Now taking a look at this compared to our factory drop-in filter, this is gonna be a dry filter as well, but it's a dry flow technology from K&N. The dry flow technology is gonna open up that synthetic filter media to allow a lot more cold air to come through while blocking out some of the excess particles, but it's gonna be maintenance free, so you don't have to worry about oiling it when it comes time for routine maintenance. The rest of the kit is gonna be completely different as well. You have an aluminum tubing as opposed to a plastic tubing from the factory, which has this flex tube. Now that flex tube there is gonna be an air restrictor. It's not maximizing airflow and volume like the straight aluminized tubing there. This is gonna be a lot more efficient, gets rid of that ugly sound tube that gets in the way of the engine bay there, so it really cleans up the appearance as well. You also get the weather stripping there that's gonna help seal in underneath the hood. The air box itself is not a completely closed air box like your factory one. 
it's gonna be a little bit more of an open option. So having that weather stripping, it's gonna seal in under that hood, blocking out the excess hot engine bay heat and keeping in, trapping in that cold air coming through the filter. So lots of good upgrades here. If you're interested in spending a little bit more money, there are other options out there that are completely closed air boxes, which will help keep the cold air in. But in terms of keeping the cost down and cleaning up the engine bay look, this is a great way to go. And especially if you're buying a Blackhawk intake from K&N that's got the blackout filter that's super unique, you wanna be able to see that guy. So the open filter box there, is gonna give you eyes on that as well. So really blacked out engine bay look, and it's gonna upgrade your quality. With that said, we're gonna to have to assemble a couple of things, so let's do that next. Kicking off the assembly here, you wanna take a look at your factory temperature sensor. We're gonna to have to uninstall that and transfer it over. In order to do that, twist counterclockwise, pull straight out, set that guy aside, and then put your factory tubing aside as well. All right, next up, we can install that temperature sensor onto our new tubing. Take the grommet included in the kit, insert that into the pre-drilled hole, just like that. Make sure it seats properly in there. Grab the temperature sensor and insert that into the grommet. Now this might take a little bit of working around in a circle in order to get that to seat. You wanna make sure that that seats completely properly and turn it the same way it was from the factory. Next up, we're gonna install our hose fitting. Now there are two included in the kit. The straight hose is gonna be for the five sevens. The elbow 90 degree hose is gonna be for the six liters. Obviously we're working with a five seven, so I'm gonna use the straight one. Now that's gonna thread right into the pre-threaded hole. What you wanna do is make sure you're installing it hand tight first. They're pretty easy to cross thread because they're plastic. So in install it all the way hand tight first, then grab a 14 millimeter wrench and do two complete turns to get it perfectly tight. One, two, perfect. Next up, you wanna take that filter adapter and insert that guy into the filter, just like this. Make sure it's seated flush. Once you have that guy in there, you wanna bring the clamp upward, grab your eight millimeter socket and tighten down the clamp. Next up, we're gonna take the silicone elbow, insert a clamp over the end there. Now you'll see one side says K&N, that's gonna be up facing toward your throttle body, just so it's legible from the outside of the engine bay. Insert that over the left side of the tubing, make sure it's seated properly, and tighten down that clamp. Next up, we can do basically the same thing to the other coupler. That's gonna insert on the filter side, and tighten down that clamp. Next up, we're heading under the hood. We're gonna remove the bracket that was holding on that sound tube to the left of the throttle body. Grab a 16 socket and remove this nut. Next up, we have to install this swivel bracket to our rad support. Now this is gonna go right in between these two layers where this hole is here. It's to the left of the bump stop and to the right of the factory eight millimeter that held on our intake. Now you're gonna use one of the smaller bolts along with the large washer to cover that hole. So put the bracket in first, drop the bolt in from the top, put a large washer on from the bottom and follow it up with the nylon lock nut. Now it's a tight space and it's tough to see. Try not to drop that nut in the engine bay. Tighten it down by hand. All right, now we're gonna get it nice and snug. Next up, you can grab a 10 millimeter socket, hold on to that bolt head there, use a 10 wrench to hold on to the nut on the bottom and tighten it down. You wanna get it nice and snug, but still leave a little bit of room for adjustment so that you can line it up to the air box. All right, now on the cylinder head, there is a threaded hole. And we're gonna use the swivel bracket included in the kit to bolt it down right there. But you wanna make sure you're putting the spacer included in the kit between the bracket itself and the head. Use the bolt included in the kit to tighten it down. Just make sure you're not cross-threading it. And again, we're gonna get this snug, but still leave a little room for adjustment. Grab your 13 socket and tighten that guy down. Let's install our temperature sensor extension harness while we have easy access. Plug that guy into the factory harness. The other end is gonna reach all the way over to the new location of the temperature sensor, which is now gonna to be to the right of the throttle body instead of before where it was to the left. 
So we're gonna feed that guy just under the throttle body like that while we have easy access here. Next, let's drop our heat shield into place. That's gonna go straight down where the factory one was. And as you can see, the swivel bracket here lines up to the open hole on the side of the heat shield. So let's attach that first. I'm gonna put the bolt through, follow it up with the washer and nylon lock nut on the other side. All right, so now we can tighten that guy down. Grab your 10 socket and wrench and tighten it down. Next, we can install the 90 degree bracket so that it connects to the frame here where the factory eight millimeter was. So you wanna grab the bolt included in the kit, put that through, follow it up with the washer and the nut. Before I tighten down this bracket, I wanna swing it up grab the factory eight millimeter bolt and put it back through so I know it's in the right position. And then we can tighten both of those down. I'm gonna use my 10 millimeter to tighten down the bracket first and then we'll tighten down the eight millimeter. Switch over to the eight and tighten this one down. Next, take the tubing assembly with the elbow already installed. Insert one side through the opening on your air box and connect it to the throttle body. All right, let's tighten down our throttle body clamp. Next up, we can attach the bracket that we installed to the cylinder head to the open threaded hole on the side of the tubing. Just gonna thread that guy in by hand and then we'll have to go in with a ratchet because it's a tight space. All right, I'm just gonna thread this guy down by hand first. Grab a 10 millimeter short socket and tighten that guy down. Next up, we can drop in our filter. Now you want to slide the clamp over that coupler first, drop the filter in. It may take a little bit of finessing there, but you're basically just gonna pop this guy on just like that. Bring the clamp downward and tighten that down. Next, we're gonna replace that factory breather line. So we're gonna pull that straight off. There's a new hose included in the kit, so you're just gonna slide that guy onto that factory location. Bring that guy around and connect it to the hose fitting we installed on the tubing. Just make sure you seat it all the way down. Next, we can grab the weather strip that's gonna go around the top edges of your air box. And you're basically just gonna push that guy onto the edge and work your way all the way around. You just wanna make sure it's seated. Now we can move on. Let's plug in our temperature sensor now that we have it relocated to the right of the throttle body and our extension harness is installed. Last but not least, the engine cover, if your vehicle came with one, slide that guy back in place. Make sure your hose is routed properly and snap it into place. From there, you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the K&N Blackhawk cold air intake available for the 09 and newer 5.7 liter Hemi equipped challengers without the shaker hood. You can get yours right here at AmericanMuscle.com.